The purpose of this video is to describe a technique for arthroscopic treatment of dorsal ganglion cysts. Classically, these cysts have been treated with observation, close rupture, aspiration, or open surgery. Each of these modalities have had drawbacks, namely persistence, recurrence, or scar morbidity. Other complications include infection, injury to the scapholunate interosseous ligament or neurovascular structures, stiffness, and theoretically, the possible development of a synovial cutaneous fistula. As a result, the development of a minimally invasive technique has been entertained. The reasonableness of a minimally invasive technique is predicated on the reduction in patient morbidity while having an equivalent or better outcome as well as being economically sound. Ganglion cysts are mucin-filled synovial diverticula without true epithelial linings that herniate due to trauma, irritation, or interligamentous attenuation with mucoid degeneration. Ganglion cysts constitute approximately two-thirds of all hand masses. 70% are located in the dorsal capsule area and originate from the SL articulation. Indications for surgical resection include pain and discomfort, neurovascular-associated symptoms, failure of conservative measures, and recurrence. Surgical management is aimed at identifying the stalk of origin and obliteration. In general, the cyst itself is resected in the open technique. Some have advocated for resection of a portion of the adjacent capsule wall as well. To perform the procedure, the patient is placed in the supine position. After general anesthesia is established, the equipment and operative team are assembled around the patient, including a hand table and arthroscopic traction tower. The operative extremity is placed in the arthroscopic tower using finger traps and 12 pounds of traction is applied. The extremity is exsanguinated with an ESMARC. All ports are created by inserting a 22 gauge finder needle prior to making an incision with a 15 blade through the skin. The skin incision is then followed by spreading in an axial direction with a mosquito in line with the tendons until entry is made into the joint. The mosquito is then turned 90 degrees and spread in a horizontal fashion in line with the joint to avoid injury to the articular surfaces of the carpus. A blunt trocar is then placed. The radiocarpal joint through the 6R portal as well as the midcarpal joint through the MCU portal are visually inspected including the capsule, bones, synovia, and joint space by use of an arthroscope connected to a camera and light source which is in turn connected to a monitor tower. The camera port is placed at the 6R location. Next, the dorsal ganglion cyst stalk is located with use of a 22 gauge finder needle. The stalk is most commonly emanating from the scaphalunate ligament at the 3-4 interval. Placement of the finder needle results in decompression of the cyst as it passes through the cyst wall. Once the stalk has been located, a 5 mm incision is made through the skin with a 15 blade, again positioning it in the axial direction. This establishes the working port through which the shaver is then passed. The stock is debrided back to the dorsal wrist capsule along with any accompanying synovitis. The shaver is used in oscillation mode at up to 3000 RPM. The stalk and any remnants are removed meticulously. A portion of the adjacent wrist capsule may also be debrided along with the stalk. This eliminates the one-way valve effect and source for filling of the cyst. It also creates a new alternative pathway of least resistance. At conclusion of the procedure, all port sites are closed with 4-O monocryl in interrupted inverted deep dermal fashion. Mastosol and steri strips are then applied. The patient is placed in a volar splint to allow the wrist to rest and any inflammation to subside. This also prevents the pumping action of the joint motion, which has been suggested as a mechanism for formation of synovial cutaneous fistulae. The splint is removed at two weeks and mobilization is commenced.